can't wait for us to chat with my uh, with our next guest. Um, I spoke to Jasmine Harmon quite a few years ago when she was just taking her first vegan steps and we chatted about a few things. And I've heard her speak before and she made me cry. In fact, she, she did... <laughs> She did an interview with that TV magazine, and I always say Jasmine Harmond made me cry um, because she noted her sort of top favourite people, and I was one of them, and, and literally, I'm so thankful, and it's, it's, I don't want to cry, I've got makeup on. Um, but we see her on TV, we see her on A Place in the Sun, and she's flying here, there, and everywhere, and we're so thankful for her support to come to VegFest. She's a really genuine, lovely lady, passionate vegan. So can we have a lovely, really go wild and loud, a warm VegFest welcome for the wonderful TV star, Jasmine Harmon. Woo! Uh, can I just say, Karen, uh, she, she actually made me cry earlier as well. She stepped on my toe on the way in. Well, look, I'd like to find out about your vegan journey. Um, I know it had a really big impact on your life, and it did coincide with having, having your baby at the time. Yeah, as well. that's right. My, my now five year old, five and a half. But for me, um, I think, I suppose the journey started when I was very, very little because my dad was vegetarian. My dad's here today, actually, somewhere wandering around with my kids. But he was vegetarian, and so it was in my consciousness already that there were alternative ways to be. And, and I think I was about six when I said to my mum, Mummy, I'm, I'm vegetarian now. You know, I didn't, I didn't like eating meat anyway, and I would only eat processed things, you know, as a child that I was given, you know, like uh, sausages or, you know, burgers or mints or that kind of thing. And... I realised at the age of six that I'd been tricked, that I was eating dead animals, which I hadn't put two and two together up until then. Um, and, I, and I said, I'm a, ve I'm a vegetarian, mummy. And she said, well, you can be vegetarian tomorrow because I've made shepherd's pie. And I remember crying into that shepherd's pie and just sitting, you know, thinking, I don't want to eat this. And then, but the next day, you know, fair play to her. And because my dad was already vegetarian, it probably wasn't such a big change but so from then on I was vegetarian all my brothers and sisters subsequently also became vegetarian and that was that for for many years for about 35 years and it wasn't until I became a mum and I was breastfeeding well I was trying to and I was really having a hard time I really wanted to breastfeed but I was struggling and I just remember thinking how unfair is this that cows just make milk for no reason and I've got a baby here, and I'm not making any milk. And it kind of just suddenly clicked for me that a cow doesn't make milk for no reason, and that, like all mammals, they have to have a baby in order to produce milk. And I just cried for three days. I literally was so... Up, I was quite hormonal anyway with a newborn baby, but I was so upset by this realisation that for 30 or more years, I had been thinking I was doing no harm, but not really putting two and two together. So it was, it was a big moment for me. And I think, you know, it, it, I did the first Veganuary, and um, I think there were 3,000 or so uh, participants that first year, which was 2014 you know, which has gone <laughs> astronomical now when you think about, when you think there were only 3,000 people did the first one and I was one of them. And then since then, I've never looked back and I, you know, and I feel very strongly about, um, you know, trying to, and trying to move it into all areas. So, you know, I, th I feel like my vegan journey is a process. It started off with, with food, but it's also gone on to other things like... Um, cosmetics and clothing and accessories and you know and there are so many options out there now you you know even for Christmas I, my husband wanted a new wallet so I bought him a lovely beautiful um, little vegan leather wallet and he was absolutely thrilled he was thrilled with it so 
you know, it, it's, it's always progressing. I don't think you can ever be a perfect vegan, but you can do your best and you can try and eliminate those things that, that are in your home or in your life or in your workplace that, are, could, that there are good alternatives for, and which is everything, basically. It's people just, you know, a lot of people don't want to know. And probably everyone, you know, here or everyone, you know, at some point may have an awakening and whatever triggers that it doesn't matter but to realize that actually open your eyes have consciousness and awareness of what you're consuming you know putting into your body or taking into your or buying or whatever and that consciousness is what prevents us from you know from what prevents us from wanting to do harm to other to other beings and that is so powerful you know, if you don't know or you turn a blind eye or you just think, I'm not really there yet, I don't want to open my eyes to these videos that I'm seeing online or whatever it is. You know, I don't like, I don't watch any of those videos online because I know that it will haunt me forever. But I also know that I am not contributing to, to that in as much as possible. So I feel like I don't have to watch it. And I, but I, I remember when I was transitioning thinking, I feel like I have a duty, a duty to, to, to watch something, to know, to educate myself, to do my research. So that You I know, there is a super abundance. Every day there's a new vegan product. There's new vegan cheeses and ice oh. creams and cakes. And, this, and it is very exciting. But we do have to realise that they are, they've got fat still, in they're them. Still they're still They're not going to be, you know, you, you shouldn't maybe have them every day and a whole food plant-based diet is better. So I've been incorporating more lentils and I fell in love with lentils. I've not had them for ages and they're so delicious. So good. And easy. So I'll have to invite you around so you can try I my dal. Come around. I want try my dal. Really? What, yeah. What's in it? Well, lentils. <laughs> Obs. Just lentils. <laughs> no, not just lentils. <laughs> not just lentils, but yeah, there are a lot of lentils. Yeah. So what, let, let's, because I want to hear about going abroad as well, because I know a lot of us travel and that's your speciality because you're all, you're all over filming and they yeah. have to cater for you. But before we talk about that, um, I'd just love to hear what is a typical day in the life of Jasmine for your food, okay. for your healthier options that helps you get to the body size that that you would like? So I now, when I'm at home, it's probably quite different to when I'm away, but when I'm at home, I normally have porridge for breakfast and I'll maybe put some um, vegan protein, some kind of protein, like a pea protein, or I'll put some flaxseed in it. And then I will have it usually with almond milk or oat milk or whatever I've got in the fridge, but usually almond milk. And then I'll top it with dried fruit, nuts, seeds... Um, fresh fruit and so I have quite a big breakfast and quite a filling breakfast with plenty of you know there's you know, it's going to keep me going pretty much till lunchtime so I have quite a big breakfast but it's usually porridge with all the with all the extra added extras and then for a snack I might I'll have nuts usually yeah. just nuts um, lunch I've stopped eating a lot of bread so I have rye bread now which I really much prefer actually yeah. Um, because I was having probably toast for breakfast, sandwich for lunch, bread with my dinner. So I've stopped having so much bread and that has really made a difference. And now I notice if I eat bread, you know, I just feel so bloated. It, I've never had a, uh, an intolerance to it, not that I knew of anyway, but I've really noticed the difference now. So I have rye bread with avocado or hummus or something, you know, maybe some vegan pate or, and then tomatoes and salad and stuff like that. And that'll be my lunch. And then I'll quite often have a protein shake as well yeah. um, in the afternoon or maybe when I give the kids their dinner, I'll have that to keep me going till I have my dinner. And then for dinner, I'll just make either, you know, something like um, a curry with rice or I'll make, uh, you know, basically whatever I would have before, but I'll make it from scratch and I'll have a much smaller portion and I'll put the rest in the fridge and I won't eat until the next day instead of going back for it later. So I think that's really interesting. And when I've had the pleasure of sharing the stage as well with some of the world's top vegan athletes, 
That's what they're telling me, especially how they start their day with the porridge. Oh, really? I, I love that with the, you know, when you get your nuts and your seeds and, and bits and I, pieces I now like have, that. I, I now have quite a lot more fat in my diet yes. than I yeah. deliberately. So lots yeah. of nuts, lots of seeds, lots of avocados. Um, whereas probably before, the fats I was having were probably all hidden fats. I mean, I mainly travel in Europe. Um, and even in the last few years, it has come on phenomenally i mean i do use the happy cow app quite a lot which is brilliant as a resource for finding places that are vegan friendly but it's amazing now even you know the team that i work with quite often uh, there's lots of vegans and vegetarians in the team as well or they've got other intolerant you know everyone's got their own awkward like gluten-free or someone's you know so so we tend to eat in places that will accommodate everybody and so it's really, and everybody's much more open. If there's a really nice vegan restaurant nearby, then everyone's happy to go and give it a try. And we do that quite frequently. Because back in, when I first started working on A Place in the Sun 15 years ago, you know, there were so many times you'd go, oh, can I have the vegetable soup? Is it vegetarian? Is it made with um, chicken stock or anything? No, 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 it's all fine. It's all only vegetables. Okay, great. And you get it, and then there's like chorizo floating in it. Oh. And well, it's not meat, it's chorizo. And you go, never mind. Or, you know, you order asparagus and you're definitely vegetarian. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And it's wrapped in bacon when it lands on your plate. So, but that has changed an enormous, that, you know, a great deal. It's so, so, so much better. And, and, you know, even if you stop off in a random sort of roadside builder's sort of cafe in Spain, you go in and you say, soy vegana. They know what you're talking about, and they take it all very seriously now because everybody has to now with with allergens and all that kind of thing. So, so it's yeah. it's I've, much stricter now. I've got family in Spain, and I've noticed such a difference in the last two or three years. Yeah, it's there. been it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So I don't really feel like I have any um, difficulty with eating out so much now. Of course, sometimes you are limited, or you say, you know, you order a paella and make sure it's got no fish stock or meat stock and then you find a suddenly find a bone in it or whatever and so so you still have the odd um disaster but on the whole it has improved phenomenally and much love to jasmine Harmon. she's Thank such you. a busy lady travels all over the world so we're so thankful to jasmine she's absolutely oh, inspirational thank so thank you for coming can we have a really loud mad round of applause for our wonderful team here and thank you as well to you as well thank you